Okay, hello everybody. Now this is a response to a request I had from a viewer that wanted to know how to hook up more than one uh, MOT in a power supply. In other words, if they wanted to use two or say four in a uh, higher power amplifier. So we'll just start with the basics and then I'll take you through some of the schematics uh, that I have. Okay, take two MOT high voltage power supply with step start circuit. Start with locating two matching MOTs or at least two that are very close in size. If possible, two that stand vertical. Remove the two hysteresis limiters or slugs from each of the transformers. Locate the ground ends of the high voltage windings. And if they're going to be solder lugs, so you're going to clean them uh, because they have varnish, you won't be able to solder to them until they're, so they're ready to solder to. Leave the end of the uh, high voltage winding attached to the lugs. In other words, don't remove it. Uh, you'll just leave that attached and you'll hook a ground wire there later. This will later be thought of as a center tap for the two transformers. Then will be noted on the schematic with a phasing dot. I'll show you that later. Um, and that denotes uh, start and stop of the windings, like the inside wire will be your start winding. Okay, uh, locate the ends of the primaries. And you'll see that one end of each of the windings is closer to the iron core. These leads will also be noted in the schematic with a phasing dot. The reason you're doing this is so that when you are connecting up the step start relays it will be easier to figure out which wire goes where and the end result will be that when the transformers are powered up the two outside ends of the high voltage windings will be the correct polarity at each half cycle <clears throat> and will give you less ripple on the DC voltage if any and will be at 120 cycles instead of 60. In other words it will be a full wave bridge like a true center tap transformer connected to a full wave rectifier. The step start relays RY1 and RY3 uh, cannot be combined into one relay because they need to switch a few milliseconds apart and you will have separate RC timing networks connected to each of the coils. The reason for this is that the magnetic field in each of the MOTs will need to be given time to collapse to zero before the 120 volts is reapplied. If this is not done, you will be scratching your head trying to figure out why you keep blowing fuses every now and then when nothing else is wrong. The contacts of RY2 and RY3 relays should be rated at 20 amps or more and the coil voltage can be whatever the voltage is that you're going to use for your switching voltage. In other words, your keying supply. I use 24 volts because it's a common value and it's also the voltage that the RC timing circuits are figured out for and you'll find that 24 volt relays are usually cheaper priced than 12 volt units. Okay. Now This would be the setup if you're going to just run your power supply on 120 volts. RY2, RY3, separate relays. You'll have a mains relay. These key up. The first thing that keys up will be these mains re the main relays. RY2 will be almost instant within a few milliseconds. And then RY3 will follow. You'll see the reason for that when I show the, the timing circuit. The phasing dots I talked about here. This would be the inside winding, the, the winding that's closest to the iron core. And the same on the high voltage. This will be the little lug that the wire looks like it comes from the center, clear down inside and comes out to a little ground lug and solders to and you want to hook these up correctly uh, in order so that, like I say, this will simulate a center tap transformer. And this is the way 
you would want it wired if you're going to hook it up for 240. And you'll still have a step start. You'll notice it's a little different. This one starts out using neutral. The reason for that is from one side of your line to neutral will be 120 volts. So the transformers are started on 120 even though they're hooked in series. So each voltage is essentially getting half of your 120 volts. And that's like a soft start. And you don't have to use a resistor that may overheat or burn out and you won't have to figure out the value. This will just all be natural. The timing and the secret is in the little circuit that controls the relays. And this would be the way RY2 and RY3 would be hooked up. You see that once this one switch switches, there'll be no voltage going through the circuit for just a little bit. And then a given milliseconds later, this one will connect. And then your route will be from here for to here to here. And then there'll be a full 240 volts applied all the way across your transformers. The output side will still be hooked the same as if you'd have it for 120 volts. Uh, this stays the same. Okay. This is going to be your step start circuit. The timing, the main parts that are different are right here. This one's a 37K on this baseline and this one's a 24K. The rest of the parts are all going to be the same. And like I said, this is figured out for uh, just your common run-of-the-mill 24 volt relays and the time constant is just a few milliseconds apart. RY4 is going to be your main key-in transistor on this. There is a thought that I will give, and I'll show you the schematic here. Um, these MOT transformers, they draw a lot of current. So if they're going to be in use for quite a while, like on time, uh, you may want to give thought of to let them idle in between periods of your communication. And I come up with a circuit that gives about a three minute hold. In other words, if nothing's going on for about three minutes, this transistor, once it's keyed, it's activated, this, re this uh, capacitor is charged, you have a variable hold time, so if it's too long, you can kind of turn it down to two minutes or up to three, whatever. This relay, transistor relay circuit here, will hold your transformers on. The power supply will wait and the transformers will run for about three to four minutes and if nothing's going on they'll just automatically shut off and go to standby and what that does it allows the transformers a little bit of time to cool because they do draw a lot of energy and if they're on continuous they'll get hot and you'll you still will need fans but you'll see that if you use them this way they'll draw a lot less current and they'll have time to cool down and after a couple hours of use and talking you'll notice that they're a lot cooler because they'll just sit back and wait in between like when you're listening or maybe you're not you've stopped talking for a little bit um, they just relax and shut off okay on the thoughts of the key in circuit you could use this kind of circuit uh, if you, this would be a CB type radio uh, amplifier, you wouldn't need this part here. This just senses RF. The uh, transistor will key the relay whenever it senses RF coming in the antenna port. If it's a ham radio, most ham radios have a PTT line hooked to the radio and you run a separate line to the amp and this is the way you could institute that this is simply ground in other words if you ground this line you'll notice that you're grounding this side of the relay it ignores the transistor 24 volts on the relay and this grounding this will key that relay this line here is going to go to your other bias relays your screen relays, if you have tubes, 
um, like for amps that use a 4X150, a 4CX250, 4CX350, 4CX800, 4CX1000, 4CX1500B, a 4CX5000, a 4-125, 4-250, and a 4-400. Any of those where you're operating them grid-driven and you want to shut the screen off and bias and everything, this is where this control line here would go to. And this simply, there'd be 12 or 24 volts on the other side of the relay, and this just simply, when in this relay or this transistor conducts, it'll draw that current through the diode and close that relay that's downstream of this point right here. Now, a safe way when you're taking the wire off of the transformer to get it down to whatever voltage that you want to use, here's a safe way of doing that. Take a 12 volt transformer, this would be for 120 volt if you just got one transformer or whatever, each one you want to test. Take 12 volts, a little 12 volt transformer, put it across the 120 volt winding of the MOT. Then this voltage here can be safely measured and when you find the voltage, like one I did was um, 19, about 195 volts across, so times 10, that's 1900 volts just about 2,000. It'll come over, well, it was a raw transformer and that was the one that would show 2,700 volts if you didn't uh, take any of the windings off. But this would be a safe way to test it. Uh, it could be, uh, you could read that with just a little uh, Harbor Freight meter. I think they go up to, yeah, they go up to 750 volts. So you'd be looking at about 180, 100 and 90 volts across here uh, and you're going to want to get that down if you're deep taking wire off like you follow my other video where I show how to use a drill and disrupt some of the windings to take the wire off well every time you want to check it this would be a safe way to check it and keep in mind when you're calculating your output the DC output voltage is going to be 1.414 times whatever voltage you see on here times 10. So if you see 180 volts and if 120 volts is applied that's going to give you 1800 so it would be 1800 times 1.414 will be your DC voltage. That's what that means. Okay and the safe way to test your 240 volt setup, same idea. You keep in mind a times 10, so you'd use a 24 volt transformer. Hook it across the two transformers in series, 24 volts. You measure the voltage from here to here will be for one transformer. And on this one, if you measure from here to here, you should see twice that voltage if you have these windings hooked up correctly. If you don't, you just need to swap one of these. That's the idea. Is you need to see twice the voltage here that you see from point A to the ground terminal of that one. So from outside to outside, using a 24 volt transformer, this should measure twice what you see from here to here. Okay, hope that helps and gives a little insight. Any of these schematics you want, uh, drop me a line or a message or give me an email. And they're, they're all in JPEG format. And I can just drop them in an email and email them to you real easy. So if you want any more information or ask me about some of the transformers, uh, drop me a line. Uh, make uh, comments. Uh, let me know if this is any help. And uh, we'll try to answer any questions that you guys come up with. So, thank you. 
have a good day, and we'll see you on the next video.